The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Isaiah 50, verse 7, For the Lord God will help me, therefore I will not be disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. 2 Corinthians 3, 5, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. Second Chronicles 16.9 For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. First Corinthians 15.10-11 But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preached, and so you believed. Matthew eleven twenty-eight to 30 Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Following our customary procedure, the next few moments are devoted to silent prayer, in order that we might be properly and academically prepared to concentrate on the teaching of the Word of God. Therefore, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we consider it a privilege to have the freedom and opportunity of fellowshipping in you and in your Word. We are grateful, Father, that through your grace you brought us this time in this Bible study to take in your precious word, which is the only shield that we can equip and arm ourselves to confront any false teaching that religion tries to spread in this devil's world. We now pray that you give us the concentration on our study today through the feeling of the Holy Spirit, challenge and motivate us to the things that you're going to teach us. These things we pray, that you make them a blessing to us. In Christ's name, Amen. Welcome everyone to our daily Bible study of the Vic Walbidu Evangelistic Ministry. Today, we are going to... Uh, take up another subject which is very popular and uh, and I know <clears throat> some of you have already digested some of these studies or uh, points of doctrine that we are going to take up. It is uh, of course entitled God's Plan. Okay, you are ready? All right, we're going to focus our attention now to the subject entitled God's Plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> we will be touching on the various basic doctrines related to our topic as we go along. You should know that 
all the doctrines that we are going to take up in this study are of course taken from the Bible, which contains the very words of God. And as we go on in our discussion of our topic, God's plan, we would invite you all who are subscribers and followers of our ministry, the Vic Balbido Evangelistic Ministry, to uh, have an open mind so that God, the Holy Spirit, the only teacher of truth, can clearly and vividly teach you His truth. Yes, when we study God's Word, we need to maintain a positive attitude and an open mind, because of our, if our mind is closed, then the Holy Spirit, as one of His ministries, is to convict unbelievers of their righteous, unrighteousness and of the unpardonable sin. And not only does the Holy Spirit convict unbelievers of their sins, but also to convict believers of their being carnal and reversionistic. Hence, we all need to have an open mind if we really want to be able to absorb the pertinent lessons on this very topic. Now, <clears throat> we have already learned that God is eternal. He has no beginning and no end, and that He is a person. God, as we learned, has a plan which is perfect. His plan is perfect because He is perfect. Only a perfect person can produce a perfect plan. Like I said, it is tragic to see a lot of people today including believers who do not believe the Bible is the Word of God. Hence, these same people do not believe in God. Because to believe in God, the true God of the Bible, one has to believe the Bible first, where we learn who and what God is. Now, in order to learn who and what God is, we need to study His Word. Before we study the Word of God as believers, we have to be free from any personal sin, mental attitude sin, lingual sins, and over sins. Of course, using the principle of 1 John 1, 9, the rebound technique. That is the mechanism of being filled by God, the Holy Spirit, and being in fellowship with God. Then and only then can we begin to study God's Word. And as we go on in our study, which is the process of keeping our spiritual momentum, God the Holy Spirit, through His teaching ministry, enlightens us of God's truths. Hence, we can learn, know, and believe God through His truths. What we're doing is following God's mandate in 2 Peter 3.18. And our faith and trust in the Word of God is being developed because, as what Romans 10, 17 says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. When our faith is being developed within us, we will gradually start to walk in the grace of God. Now, we believers are mandated by God through His Word to walk with faith, to walk in the light, to walk worthy of our vocation. Now we should ask ourselves the following questions. Am I really trusting God? Am I uh, depending on His grace? Am I relying on His will? Am I waiting on His perfect timing? Hebrews 11, I mean Hebrews 4.11 says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into his rest. Always remember the faith rest drill that we have to apply in our daily spiritual life. It is even supposed to be a moment-by-moment -moment application of the faith rest drill. And why is it so? 
The answer is because our relationship to God is a moment-by-moment experience. And do you know what I mean? You see, the old sin nature within every person, in both believers and unbelievers, reigns like a king. At the moment we were born physically in this world, we immediately lost our relationship to God because of the formula AOS plus OSN equals spiritual death. That means Adam's original sin plus old sin nature equals spiritual death. Either to believe in Christ as Savior and He is saved. So man is given the choice either to believe in Christ as Savior and He is saved or to reject Christ and He is judged to condemnation, eternal condemnation. So now, as believers, we either choose, one, the sin nature, old sin nature, to reign in our life, or the grace, the Holy Spirit, to reign in our life. Again, it is a matter of choice. You see, it's sad to know that a big majority of believers today just do not know what to do with their Christian life after they got saved. They don't know God's plan for their life. Most of them think that after they got saved, that's it. Okay, God, bye-bye, see you in heaven. (laughs) But listen, if you are a believer now, you are mandated by God through His Word in Second Peter 3.18 to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And how to do it? By studying God's Word. That is the mechanism to obey God's mandate. And that is the only means to have your soul grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In fact, that is the process of feeding your soul. Feed your soul the Word of God because the Word of God is the only food for a believer's soul. You remember Matthew 4, 4 and Deuteronomy 8, 3? They clearly teach us that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So, when you take heed of God's command to study the Word of God, then that is to follow God's plan for your life as a believer and letting your soul grow up spiritually. Now, please remember the three phases of God's plan for every believer. Phase one, salvation. That's in Acts 16, 31. Phase 2, believer in time, 2 Peter 3, 18. And phase 3, believer in eternity, Revelation 21, 4. Now, as believers, we fix our eyes on phase 2, where we are at this point in time, because we are believers in time. Okay, our human spirit, which is part of us, that one which was in living, energized, and activated at the point of salvation, in conjunction with our soul, completes the inner equipment of grace apparatus for perception, or gap for short. And be aware that this is one of God's divine assets that He provides for every believer for the purpose of giving us believers the means to grow and advance in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Second Peter 3.18 And now, because you have been born again, then you need sustenance because you are likened or compared to an infant who is beginning to grow in order for him to reach maturity. He needs sustenance. Merely comprehended to convert doctrine from something 
that is merely comprehended academically into something thoroughly understood and usable for both spiritual advance and spiritual application to life. So, it is but important that we should mark it while we are continuing our study on who and what God is and what is His plan for us believers. Now, always bear in mind that every person, every member of the human race who is born in this world is spiritually dead. Did you hear me? We are all spiritually dead when we are born physically. So because the meaning of spiritual death is total separation of man from God, then man, due to that condition of his, has nothing to do with God. In the same way that God has nothing to do with him. Okay? Man, due to his separated condition from God, has practically no connection with God whatsoever. And listen, the only means that he can be reconciled to God, be back to God, acquire relationship again with God, is for him to believe in the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as his Savior. Now, who prepared that means of reconciling him to God? Answer, God did. So I repeat to say that. The only way that man can be born again, thus regain or recover his relationship to God, is for him to accept God's offer of salvation, faith alone in Christ alone. And that very moment, he believes in Christ as Savior, just like I said, he will be born again. He receives eternal life. He is saved. He becomes a member of the royal family of God. His name is now written in the book of eternal life and is entered into the protocol plan of God. So, it is at that instant that this person who had believed in Christ, that he becomes spiritually alive, while he is physically alive as well. Thus, he now owns two lives, spiritual and physical. So, I hope you understand that. And do you still remember what we have studied regarding this? He who is born once will die twice. But he who is born twice will only die once. So I hope you still fully understood the meaning of it. I think we need to re-explain to you, especially to the new ones, what does this really mean. Okay, listen and listen very well. A person who is only physically born, that's the first birth, will die twice, physical and spiritual. But a person who is born physically and spiritually, second birth, will, will die only once. That is his physical death. So I hope that's clear enough. And we will continue in our discussion on this tomorrow. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the grace, opportunity of fellowshipping in your word today. May God the Holy Spirit motivate and challenge us to feed our soul with your word until we reach the stage of capacity for life, which is the pleroma stage, that's become winners in this present life and in the life hereafter. We pray that what we learned in your word today may become a blessing to our life. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen.